Office Work Session for the Alamance County Board of Commissioners for June 6, 2023. To order. Everybody's present. We don't have an agenda which indicates that we're going to we do prayer, but Pam, I believe this is. I'm going to pray two days in a row. Yeah, All right. right. Two days in a row, young lady. Okay. okay. So if you like to open Can we do the flag too? Yes. Okay. We can just all bow our heads for a second. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you that we're here together today to work hard for the citizens of our county because we are citizens of our county. Keep us focused on what is right and help us to always remember what is right. Give us patience, give us perseverance, give us courage. Let us be fearless leaders for this county as we have been elected to do so. I just want to thank you, dear Lord, for always being by our side and leading us through the tough times as the good ones do. In the name I pray, amen. Let's all stand for our pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Do not go down Hardy Street. No. <laughs> Yeah, I'd be happy to explain what's at your seats, Thank commissioners. You. Uh, good afternoon. We have a very short agenda, but wanted to go in a particular order given the number of guests that have been invited today. Uh, but you'll also find at your seats another uh, copy of the budget document. And under presented, it says updated with corrections. So we'll spend a little time after we hear from our volunteer fire departments orienting you on what those corrections were. They're very minor. Most of them were dealing with the table of contents. If you notice, those weren't always aligned with the right budget pages. So we've, we have a corrected version that should help ease that. Um, so the first item on your agenda was the volunteer fire department um, proposed tax rates that came up at your last work session. You wanted to invite them here today to get a better understanding of what was being asked with the increase in their, in their fire tax. So let me start out with, I cut uh, Sheriff Johnson off last night and allowed the uh, chair of the school board to continue on. So I need to find out, am I under arrest or? <laughs> Not yet. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank you for your understanding. You want to just call these as they're listed? However you'd like to, to conduct the meeting, sir. Do you need a list of them or? Oh, yeah, if you don't mind, Susan. Absolutely. So, commissioners, before you this afternoon, you'll also find a, a packet concerning our volunteer fire districts. On there, you have each district listed with their current tax rate, their revenue neutral rate, as well as a inflation neutral rate. I'll get that out. Um, their proposed tax rate, their district valuation, as well as the value of one penny. Um, so that you can see the differences of what one penny represents for each of those districts. Also behind that is the packet that we received from the volunteer fire districts, which will give some explanations as to what their increases are. But they are here today, and you can call upon them however you see fit. Let's just go down the list. Mm -hmm. uh, 54 East. Yes, sir. You want to come forward? Chairman, are you just looking for an explanation of the increase on their tax rate, or did you want to give them some additional direction? Let me just announce, I'm sure you all want to go dramatically below the amount of you were receiving last year, right? Mm. We are. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have a post. Yeah. If you will, uh, board, do you have questions? Uh, uh, State your name and, and the fire district, and just give us a little background of where you were and where you want to be. All right, my name is Steve Couturier, Swepsonville slash 54 East Fire District. Uh, so you'll see me on there twice. Right. Uh, we did drop from a nine cent tax rate to a six cent tax rate. Um, and there's some conflicting numbers. 
because our numbers were actually updated as of April 14th. We were initially working off of a set of numbers provided on February 10th by finance, and they were updated on April 14th. We held all of our official business meetings for approval of the proposed six cent on April 3rd and got all the signatures from our outside board, inside board and such. Uh, looking at the six cent across the board for both departments, we're actually a quarter of a per, quarter of a percent uh, above revenue news I blink I believe on one case uh, let's see here so mm -hmm. revenue neutral for Swepsonville is 0 0.0575 we're proposing six cent revenue neutral for 54 East is 0 0.0681 and we're recommending six cent so we're less on one and a quarter of a percent on the other when you run the numbers if we go revenue neutral per the April 14th set of numbers provided by finance that budget combined would be 1.5 million dollars at the six cent rate we're at 1.437 million dollars so we're actually less across the board board do you have any questions what's, Mr. Turner. what's the, the need to be a above revenue neutral for Swepsonville the only justification for Swepsonville would be the competitiveness in our employment packaging. We're constantly evaluating where we sit across the county and with neighboring jurisdictions. And we're not at the top, we're not at the bottom, but we definitely have vacancies. So myself and the board are constantly looking at ways to entice people to come to our department. And that, that extra, if you want to call it that, is to increase employment package benefits and things like that. How many employees do you have? Staffing at Swepsonville, we have two 24-hour positions, a paid chief, an 8-to-5 position. Right now we are two 24-hour shifts vacant and projecting a third vacancy by the end of the year. So if anyone knows, and i um, got a lot of people in this room that's probably looking for applications. Uh, there are none nobody wants to work but okay. uh, we've had one vacancy for since last October another one since April of this year it's not new in the fire service but we've got to start enticing uh, people to start applying for our positions thank you so. I have a question. Um, yes. You talk about these positions. Is this all you got for your fire department or do you have volunteers? No, we are a combination department. We have 52 people on roster, which includes our paid staff as well. Okay, so without the volunteers, it just wouldn't happen, would it? No, absolutely not. And we have a strong volunteer pool. Awesome. Uh, we, are, we match, not to boast or anything, but we match a municipal department on a structure fire response. So just like law enforcement dnf dss ems you too are struggling with getting really good quality people to come in as far as paid positions yes okay hey. miss turner did you have other questions no sir thank you all right mr carter um 54 east and swepsonville are they a combined department is that but yes two different tax districts they are two separate tax districts one response district can you say that again two separate tax districts, one response district. So you pull from both if, there, if there's an issue in either? Yes. Okay. 54 East is Swepsonville's substation if, in all reality, but we have two separate tax districts. But this, this would equal, it will equal the tax rate out in both of those? In we, both of those from an operating districts. standpoint, we combine the two for our operating budget. I see. Okay. The state just, like you said, just equals it out. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Carter, you were recognized. Right. You have other questions? Yeah, I, I just said the other, it just seems to equalize it out for the two district districts, for the same department, basically. Yeah. Yes. Mr. Turner, Mr. Lashley. Um, no, I don't have any questions. Thank you for uh, being very conservative in your estimates. 
versus the <coughs> revenue neutral rate. You guys did a good job. Thank you. Ms. Thompson. I just want to thank you for always showing up. Thank you. Are you in our district? Whitney. <laughs> Whitney. But okay. you're all amazing. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Good. And I don't have any additional questions either. Uh, when you pull the two together, mm -hmm. you're below revenue neutral yep. as a combination. Yes, sir. And you were serious about cutting the tax rate. I was surprised. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Altamont P. Good afternoon, sir. How you doing? Ed Lipscomb, with the chief of the AO Fire Department. Um, so when we got our budget package, our revenue neutral rate was uh, 0.89 cents. Um, the inflation neutral, correct me if I'm wrong, unless Susan, I might have an older paper, um, 0.93. Um, our board had met with the budget, um, again, no opposition from the outside, and voted for a 10 cent tax rate. Um, some of this increase, we did pay off a truck um, this year, six years early, out of reserve money um, with a savings of about $24,000 to the taxpayers of our district. Um, we did also buy a new truck. Um, we are a little bit behind on truck replacement. Um, fire trucks are expensive very expensive uh, pushing eight hundred thousand dollars right now ladder trucks are in excess of two million um, the truck payment that we're looking at is around ninety ninety one thousand dollars ballpark um, you know fire equipment these guys will tell you we have seen price increases quarterly at least um, we beat a 8% increase on our fire truck, which was about $80,000 by a week. Um, we had a AFG regional grant, five departments in the county were a part of that came through our department. Um, I priced, I, I just had a quote done for just our part of that grant, 25 air packs, the prices increased $82,000 in 12 months. So, you know, what is inflation? Um, our department has spent right at $40,000 this year in truck maintenance. Um, one valve on a fire truck, most of them have four or five parts, was almost 700 bucks, and it was eight hours of labor at $115 an hour. You know, we try to be good stewards of tax money. Um, I'm an open book. You know, I encourage the public to come in and ask questions. Um, I have a copy of QuickBooks at the station, and anybody in our district can come in there at any time and question any bill that's paid. Um, again, like all the, I'm speaking for myself, but you know, gathering information, you know, over the last little bit, nobody wants to do this job anymore. I've had a position, um, July 30th will be a year that that has not been filled. We've had one applicant that wasn't qualified, um, and we're between two people. I've spent twenty thousand dollars just in time and a half this year. You know these guys are getting burnt out. It's harder and harder to find people. It's harder and harder to stay competitive. You got. I mean, we're probably. We're probably close to the bottom as far as base salary on a starting position in the county. Our benefits package makes up for it. Um, the benefits package with the salary combined, you're probably talking right around $59,000 value. You can't get people to work. Um, you know, you hear days where stations are going unmanned. You know, it costs money to staff these stations. It costs money to have proper equipment. Um, you know, we were talking out on the sidewalk, fire hose. One 50-foot section of fire hose has went up 100 bucks in the last year. 
um, we got 14,000 some odd feet of fire hose. So, um, happy to answer any questions you got. Let's start on this end. So. Um. <laughs> This may, I don't mean this to be silly, but the fires that you go to as a volunteer fire department are no less <coughs> dangerous than what a city goes to, right? Same thing. The victims that you serve and rush into a burning building are no different than the ones in the city, right? Probably a little more dangerous because we've got less personnel. Right. So um, the key to volunteer fire departments is they're spread out over this county to cover all those areas of what the city can't do because the city's constantly yep. going out themselves. Okay, thank you. Mr. Lash. Uh, let's see, I only got one question. You mentioned it earlier. I just wanted to ask. What are you thinking about that? I got it right here. Mr. Stevens, mm -hmm. can we, uh, yeah, we have all kinds of fractions of a penny. I assume we really need to be on a penny as opposed to fractions of a penny when we set a rate. No. 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 I don't think so. No, we don't. So it doesn't that, matter. Sir, no. Right. Thank you. And one other thing, you know, not to interrupt, you know, looking at, and I'm glad Susan printed out what one cent brings. You know, you can't compare any one fire district in this room to another. What a penny brings us, and a penny brings, you know, Swepsonville or Mebbin or, you know, any of these departments. If you look at those numbers, there's big differences. You know, um, I think one of them a penny brings 28, 22,000, 22, where a penny on another one brings 129,000. Mm -hmm. So there is no comparison to what one rate is versus another. It's still cost to operate. I'm sorry. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. I just have one question. Uh, you mentioned earlier about uh, you had a public meeting on uh, March 20th. Mm -hmm. How many people showed up? Other than the board and the fire department, uh, none from the public. So how can you say that the public didn't have any, I mean, the reason why they didn't say. I mean, if they didn't show up and so you take that anything. As, so you, you take know. that as like, they, since they didn't show yeah. up, they didn't. I mean, we've had people in the past that have showed up and opposed. Okay. You know, and when I opened the book and, you know, showed that transparency, it stopped. You know, and. All right. I just had one question. Chairman, thank you. Mr. Hearn. Nothing for me, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chief. Well, that's, that's I don't have anything. Your past rate was 14 pennies per hundred. Uh, uh, revenue neutral is eight and 67 one hundredths. And I have a problem with that. <laughs> uh, how in the world is a closing attorney do you start with all those fractions uh, if you're uh, doing a real estate transaction or pretty much anything else? I uh, understand legally we can split pennies. Wow. Got a mind what's on. But in reality, you heard the answer. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so I, I would encourage us to go to at least a round penny as Mayor opposed to a fraction of a penny. I don't believe you can, John, just based on the math. I don't think you can. Yeah, that's what they're asking. They're right, they're asking. Yeah. <coughs> they're asking it even 10 cents, is correct. Uh, the revenue neutral is 8 and 67 one hundredths of a penny. Uh, justify why you should not go to 9 cents as opposed to 10. Just rounding off. Well, the biggest thing is that we took on, you know, ninety ninety one thousand dollars in a new truck payment, and the increased cost. Um, just on truck maintenance this year. Um, I'm, uh, we're two hundred and sixteen percent over budget on truck maintenance. Um, that you know, and that's coming out. Of something that's got to come out of our reserve money. We've spent one hundred and seventy-one thousand dollars this year to pay off that truck we had a note on. Plus, we accelerated another payment last year, so you're 
$200,000 we took out of reserves to pay off that truck because we knew we were getting, you know, another one. Um, what is your reserve currently? Your reserve fund? Uh, as of 12:31, which I disagree with this, but um, 666,000. Right. Thank you. And you know, I'm sure that Becky over here at Cobb office will tell you we do we do things that most people don't um, we have stuff planned out turnout gear air packs radio replacement every year we're putting back money and evaluating cost to replace those things over that that period of time you know we don't have a, a general fund or anything that the county's got kind of sit back from you know what we put back is what we put back and it's all earmarked and it's all in the budget package with explanations on what each account is. I don't have any other questions, board. Any other? Can questions? I just ask one thing? You mentioned that you had gotten a grant. Mm -hmm. How much was that grant? Eight hundred and four thousand and some change. And did you keep all that money for yourself? No, that was. <laughs> <laughs> so we had tried what did you for. Do with it? I had tried for a couple of years, you know, to get our department a grant. We knew air packs were coming right. up. Um, after the second year of getting to the funding part, funding running out, we decided that, you know, there was five departments in the county that were on the same timeline of needing replacement. So we did a regional grant. It all came through AO, but it, it benefited mm -hmm. us. Uh, Fawcett, North Central, Snow Camp. Is that all of them? Yeah. Pleasant Grove. Um, we were awarded that. It did take us a little time to get all the stuff in, probably six or eight months due to COVID and back orders and whatever. But um, that five departments total benefited in the county for that. And that was a probably a lifesaver to a higher increase in their budget. So if you hadn't got that grant, all five of your these guys, girls, girl power, all five of you, where would you have gotten that money that you needed? We'd to have to take out a lot. I mean, literally, we had some money put back, okay. but it was nowhere near enough to do that. I mean, you're talking a hundred and I think it was a hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars was yeah for twenty-five air packs. That was our share of it, well, our portion of that value-wise. Um, what we paid out of pocket for that was sixteen thousand dollars. So it was a 90, they funded 90%, um, we find, funded 10%. And each department was different in how many they got. But um, there again, I'm speaking for myself, but most departments were in that crunch that I understand that they were gonna have to take out loans or increase tax rates. Right. You know, and when you take out loans at three and 4% interest, it costs. Seems like the story of first responders yeah. across the board. Thank you. Thanks, sir. E.M. Holt. Good afternoon. My name is Luden Megan with the E.M. Holt Fire Department. Um, Do you need to answer that question? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all right. <laughs> The original revenue uh, neutral tax rate that came out on February the 10th for the Emhole Fire District was 0 0.0792. Um, after our appropriate meetings throughout our board and our tax board um, and our fire department membership, it was voted on that that is the tax rate that we stick with. Um, those were all, the last meeting was on March 22nd, 2023, and that's when we voted on that 0 0.0792 tax rate. Um, and then on April 14th is when the appeals were not as much as you guys had anticipated, and that's what brought that revenue neutral rate down to 0 0.0766. Um, but since we had already voted on the 0 0.0792, that's what our budget reflects. But you were okay at the, that point in time with revenue neutral? We were. Um, that gave us just enough to accommodate 
just like you've heard everybody else here say today, staffing. Um, our part-time pool was very low mm-hmm. when we had to build that up. So fortunately, we were able to raise our part-time pay, um, and that helped us accommodate that goal. Um, well, I know personally you guys have fish fries. You have, oh, I, when I used to live out there, I cook a lot of fish and a lot of chickens. Those days have come <laughs> to an end, unfortunately, for us. Um, we, we don't do any uh, fish fries or anything like that um, anymore. Just we didn't get the result out of it that we were looking to get. So. Mm-hmm. Any board member have a question? Do you need the additional um, <clears throat> revenue above the current revenue neutral? Yes, we do. That's what we were able to accommodate that that part-time pay pool with, um, as well as we're looking at building a new station to accommodate because with our volunteers, we're not as fortunate. Our volunteer pool has dwindled very much um, after COVID. Um, we just don't have very much response from volunteers. So in to accommodate that we've had to go to more staffing um, and with that our station has become a lot smaller we're running out of room to store stuff um, so that's something we're looking into in the future uh, we're, we're looking at land now um, and that's that's also helped with, with starting that process we actually move the station no um, we're probably going to look at keeping the station that we have now um, and moving our headquarters towards closer to Guilford County line um, on 60 Zoo somewhere. We're still in the process of looking at land in that area. How much land do you have? Do you have enough to head on where you are currently? We do not. We only we have just under an acre where we're at now. Yeah. There's not much room to grow. Uh, we use that, used to use that for the Board of Elections. Uh, may still use it. The Civitan building behind us, mm-hmm. they, yeah. they use that building. Yeah. Have, have y'all seen any um, interest out of the fire academy that's through ABSS? So I actually, um, I, I started, that's where I got my start was ABSS fire academy. I may not look it, but I'm only 21 years old. <laughs> um, so I graduated in 2019 and I was able to get my levels through that. Um, and I'm a, I'm a product of that. So I, I think it's a very good thing. Unfortunately, they haven't been able to find a teacher um, yeah. the last year. Didn't he move to Guilford County? He did, he did. So that program is is no more right now but i think they do want to start it back up the younger you start the better it is law enforcement everything because the world has such a view of these positions that it can really take away from it which is ridiculous yes ma'am so thank you yes, that's ma'am. pretty awesome any other questions no thank you we thank you thank, thank you. you thank you okay, east alamance <laughs> nice try, but no, anyway. That's commitment. Good afternoon, Commissioners. My name is Jamie Joseph. I'm the Deputy Fire Marshal of the City of Mebane. It's Captain Greg Massey. Um, <clears throat> the City of Mebane obviously provides service to the citizens in the City of Mebane, but we also have a rural fire protection district outside known as the East Alamance Fire District. Our current tax rate is 10 and a half cents. We've requested the seven cent tax rate. <clears throat> Revenue neutral number was shown at 6.99. So like Mr. Paisley said, we like the round number. So <laughs> basically the same number. <clears throat> so I've been right one time. That never <laughs> That's right. <laughs> last night we had a regular <clears throat> meeting. I, I'm not sure about last night. <laughs> Um, as you all know, we're slightly over the revenue neutral, not by much, but uh, the city of Mebane, and I'm sure everybody in here knows, has seen tremendous amounts of growth. And um, that does extend outside of our city limits into the rural fire protection district as well. So trying to manage um, all that growth, continue to grow the department to manage the call volume and the um, divisions that the fire department now provides to the citizens is, is uh, definitely something that's difficult to do. So that's what our request is. Any board member have uh, any questions? Did you have any opposition? I'm sorry. No. Did you have any opposition to the 0. 0.7, 0. 0.07 rate at your public hearing? No, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, we had a just just came from another meeting, and one of the things I heard in that meeting was that there are right now 30 new I think I said 30 new yeah. subdivisions being planned in Alamance County. Um, 
I think we want to hear that more more frequently so we can keep up with it better because I was surprised at how many that that number was but um, I, I, my suspicion is that when when we b see a new subdivision go up the people that are buying homes in those subdivisions are typically have a job sometimes not even in the county so they're not volunteering to the fire department that's correct so we're growing mass but we're not expanding our volunteer base and I think that's a problem we're going to have to deal with. I'm not sure how we're going to deal with it. But you obviously can't be building homes in areas and not have people out there to protect them. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess I'm going to I'm going to say something. I'm, I'm just curious to see how many people are even remotely interested in it. But. Would there be any interest among volunteer fire departments in participating in a countywide fire service for the rural parts of the county? Okay, I don't see any, so. And the chair is frowning with that question. <laughs> <laughs> Can I add something to that? So there was some discussion a couple of years ago about doing something similar to right. Gilbert County Squad 50. But there again, the county didn't have any interest in putting any funds to it. You know, it was going to have to be shared. Well, that's the problem. I mean, all these departments, you know, when we're already strapped for money. Well, you guys are doing a super job anyway. Uh, why fix something that's not broken? You need more money. Well, they need but, more workers. Yeah. Any other questions? I just bet you all pray nothing breaks. <laughs> I'm serious because I mean I added up as like almost a thousand bucks to fix a valve I mean that's serious I know how much yeah. everything is repairs are expensive it's just ridiculous mm -hmm. it, everything is we overspent our maintenance budget very early in the year this year yeah yeah do you cover all of the city of Mavin yes sir. yes all right Alamas came to me early and wanted to know about increasing their tax rate and so forth, and I'll talk to them in a minute. Uh, and I suggested that they have a city fire department, and they absolutely said no. Does Mebbin have any interest in have a, having a city fire department? So we do have that. We do. We're, we're a municipal fire department, and we provide coverage into a rural fire protection district known as the East Alamance District. Okay, so yes, this sir. covers the areas outside the city. Yes, sir, that's correct. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Answer that question. Yes, sir. Any other questions? We thank you. Thank you. Eli Whitney, 87 South. Yes, we have a printout to help um, explain our justification. <clears throat> My name is Deborah Holt, and I'm the treasurer at Eli Whitney uh, Fire Department. Thanks. Our fire chief is on vacation. So, <laughs> thank you. As all the other fire departments have mentioned, our expenses go up year over year. Uh, we had the trend in 21 to 22, 22 to 23. Um, they're up. The major increases were in the repairs, fuel, utilities, things that you can't really um, control. Like other fire departments, we've had a struggle with full time firemen and with getting volunteers and with part time firemen. And a lot of it's the competitive pay. We had to add a fourth full-time person. We were operating with three full-time people. We don't, do not have a paid chief at this point. Um, we've tried implementing incentives for volunteers to run calls, but unfortunately, you know, our fire district, everybody has a two-income family where everybody works so volunteers are pretty much nighttime we only have 22 on the roster and our call volumes have gone up plus 
the calls are 70% EMT or medical calls mm -hmm. versus just fire calls. Right. So it takes a much higher certification, you know, whether you've got a full-time person or a volunteer or part-time, you need that EMT certification. Um, somebody mentioned the housing developments. We do have three additional in our district. They're listed on the paper. Um, we have an aging fleet of vehicles. We did purchase one that was delivered in late June of last year. And I will apologize on when we submitted the budget, it looked like we were asking for a 358% increase in note payments. If I can just explain that better, that the 80,000 that we were, we used to pay off the Eli Whitney um, building that next year we used that money to help buy air packs and we were lucky enough to get 91,000 in Amy Gailey funds otherwise we would not have been able to replace the air packs so that 80,000 will come back in to pay the note on the new fire truck and as you can see we've of all the vehicles that we have seven of the 10 vehicles are more than 20 years old um, so we've tried very hard to phase in. We have multi-year planning so that, you know, we see when we can pay one thing off so we can start to buy another. Um, also, you know, we kept an eight cent fire tax rate for 23 years without asking for an increase. And then finally in 2020, we did ask for an increase um, and I know we are asking for more than our um, revenue neutral which was 6.9 cents I believe um, we're strapped the, the for bulk, people the bulk of our budget increase has to do with salaries trying salaries trying to ensure that we have full-time help hired help um, because of our waning volunteers um, you know all of the rural count uh, rural fire departments were volunteer uh, that's how they were started and for the most part you know there were a lot of farmers mm -hmm. and um, people were <laughs> present in the community where the problems were during the day yeah. and that was the backbone of the fire department and you know it's it's a it's a wonderful dream but it's not real anymore and uh, so we we struggle with uh, from the sounds what we've heard so far we're struggling with the same thing that everybody else is so far as uh, qualified help and uh, the, the greatest increase in our budget what had to do with uh, mm -hmm hiring and, and being competitive with our salaries mm -hmm. so and and our volunteer money as mm -hmm. well any questions was there any opposition to the proposed tax rate at your public hearing no sir thank you when i was little if there was a fire call there was this loud <laughs> siren and everybody even people on the moon could hear it it was amazing and the whole world stopped and you would just watch everybody get in their cars and go it was just the community i mean mm -hmm. it's this just what we are as community um it's pretty awesome you certainly saved my dad's life a lot of times thank, thank you thank you any other questions i have to, have to say pam i remember that too i grew up in rural georgia and mm -hmm. fire big deal when, when when there was a fire out everybody rolled out mm -hmm. yeah even if you were a teenager you rolled out the hell you could so i helped put out fires grew up in mcleansville on a tobacco lawn mm -hmm. so <laughs> i understand i have to say the work ethic of a volunteer mm -hmm. fire department is exemplary for us all to follow because you go because you want to not because you're made to mm -hmm. we thank you thank you right, thank you elon
and just talked about Elon. It was your mayor that called me. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, <clears throat> like the Mevin Fire Department, we are a municipal fire department that covers district out into the county. Our uh, revenue neutral rate was 0 0.0793. Uh, the numbers that the county gave us for inflation neutral was 0 0.0846. Our approved rate after our public hearing and our uh, town council voted was 0 0.0865. The reason for the increase was we saw quite a bit of increase in our diesel cost, gas, power, things like that. Plus, we've been on a plan to hire more personnel, but we've been doing it incrementally. So starting in 2022, we hired two, one in July, one in January, and the next one was up for this budget. We didn't ask for an increase from our county side in 2022, but we are asking for a little bit to cover that third person um, this go around. Mr. Turner. Was there opposition to your proposed tax rate at your public hearing? There was not. Mr. Carter. Mr. Lashley. No, I don't have any questions. Just talk. You're Elon. Do you answer calls in all the dorms? Yes. Is that part? Does Elon University help you with budget? Um, they give us a small amount. They're currently giving us about eighty-three thousand dollars a year. Does that does that kind of equal out? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, it does not. It's a their hearts. They're, they probably got it. Um, I'm just curious how you cover all your surrounding areas plus the university. And they're not a major part of that because college students will leave a hot plate on occasionally. I'm just yep. curious. I would say frequently more yeah. than occasionally. <laughs> uh, it, it, it is a challenge um, at times for the small town of Elon to have to cover buildings like that. But. And question, are there, and when you go to say a dorm, are you, and there's a, a crisis, a medical crisis, is your EMT out of your area going to that also? Yes. Okay, so that's, okay. Young people can make some bad choices. <laughs> we all do and have. Okay, I'm just curious, I, I'm, I'm just curious at that amount from the university. Okay, thank you. I, I will add, Rich Roder, I'm the town manager in Elon. Uh, of our new valuation, mm -hmm. about 42% of our value is not taxable in Elon between the university and Twin Lakes and a couple others. Um, so we are heavily dependent on you know, the, the local taxpayer to, to fund everything. <coughs> Those larger institutional commercial entities uh, do provide a little bit, but not nearly what they would under property taxes. Well, and, and yeah. they're buying up as much land as they can to develop the city. I mean, it's a, it's a university. I get that. And it's absolutely beautiful. Um, we got a school out of that because mm -hmm. Elon, I know they wanted Elon Elementary off compared to all the beautiful, stunning architecture buildings they got. I mean, everybody benefited from that. I'm, just, I'm really curious as, and amazed that they're not a lot more financially supportive when you've got all these students that may need your care as well. And Elon is giving you less than one penny's value with Correct. their donation. Correct. Mr. Okay. Lashley. Uh, yeah, I just found one thing I would just want to ask you about quickly because it seems like quite a bit of money here. Uh, I'm looking at your financial information. Uh, the cash and investment balance as of 12-31-2022, am I seeing this correctly, $21 million? I'm not certain what you're looking at. That could be the towns as opposed to the district, the fire department. Well, I'm just curious why it's in here if it's separate. It's a, it's a town department. Right, but you're a different department than, say, the police station or the parks. So I'm just curious why these numbers are in here. That's a lot of money. $21 million. It has to be for the town. Yeah. That's, that's but it doesn't tell me what your financial statement is. What, what's your financials? Finance? How much money do you have in the, as a fire department? Have that's, a, that's a legal question. So, so are you asking how much revenue we generate from no. the county side? I'm, I'm looking at strictly your, everyone else today gave me a cash and investment balance of it's 12 
And uh, the reason I'm even making this statement here is most of those numbers between 350 and 600,000. I just looked at this one, it's 21 million, so I'm trying to figure out why. <laughs> I, I will say the fire department doesn't have any cash. You don't have any cash on hand? It always mm -hmm. com comes through your city? Yes. yes. Okay. Even the donations that are received come to the town. Okay. They don't come to the department. All right. So, okay. I think I understand. And I misspoke. Um, I was looking at Eli Whitney okay. for a penny. <laughs> so, Elon does a little better than I projected. Quick question, Mr. Chairman. So, yes, I, I want to make sure I understand. Your department covers all of the town of Elon, all of Elon University, and then a portion outside of, e of the town of Elon city limits. That's correct. And there's no municipal fire department in the town of Elon. We, yes, we, we are the municipal fire department. We just, we are contracted with this rate for the area outside the city limits. Okay, so you receive money from the town of Elon for the service to the town of Elon? No, the town of Elon receives money from this tax district to provide coverage outside of the city limits. Right, but you, but you receive a portion of the money that you receive is from the town of Elon. Yes. yes to cover right. the town of Elon. Ultimately, all of it is. Yeah. What, is, what does that mean? I'm confused. I'm, I'm very confused about this structure. I just we're, don't understand. We're, we're, we're a different category. Than right. And I'm trying to understand. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't get where you get your money from. So the municipal budget. We, we come out of the general fund for the municipal budget. Like the city department. Okay. But the, the money that you're asking us for is just for service to the area that you cover outside the town of Elon. That's that, correct. It's, it's revenue from that district. I see. Not, we, outside the town. That's correct. outside the town. I see. In the county, outside the town. And, and we may spend more than that providing services. And we don't break it out that way. We know numbers of calls and things like that. But um, it's that's part of the revenue that comes into the town that funds the fire department. Right. Did you Can receive you an increase? Uh, let me ask this question, Mr. Turner. Uh, you have a northern section and a southern section that is not inside the city, correct? That's correct. Yep. And how much of, in the northern, how much is not inside the city? So we cover Glen Raven, um, Flora Avenue. Uh, we even still cover some of the Glen Raven buildings on Webb Avenue. Um, we go up Shallowford Church Road, Elon Ospie Road to a certain distance until we meet with AO Fire Department. On the south side, we cover Huffman Mill Road all the way to the lake. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Wow. Thank you. Has the town of Elon finalized its budget for next year? It is in its final form. It will be approved and voted on next Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. And are you receiving an increase in funds from the town of Elon? Yes. Yes. Enough to cover the area that you cover outside of the town of Elon? Mm -hmm. the, the revenue that is projected from the area outside of the town of Elon is part of the, the revenue that supports the fire department. Okay. So, I, you know, if we were to revert to revenue neutral, it would leave a hole in our budget. I see. The way it's, it's put together right now. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? One more thing. 421000 blah, blah, blah. What, what is that? What, what is that dollar? Is that what you're requesting? So for the county funds right. that go into okay. the department, that's correct. And 80 of that, not in that, is only what the university covers. So our, our total budget is not the number that you see. The number that you see is what the revenue that we're generating from our county district. Right. Not. Actually, can I, can I yeah. jump okay. in here real quick? Uh, help me, because this I is will. really starting to tick me off. So what you're, mm -hmm. the number that you're referring to, the 421 million five fourteen. Right. Yeah. that is the district's valuation gotcha. that is taxable. Gotcha. So that is not showing what revenue would be generated, just showing the breakdown of what their district values are then the value of the penny is basically take that penny, multiply it by their tax rate, and that's going to give you their generated revenue, which is in your commissioner's Okay. Book. Just off the top of your head, can yep. you tell me what that amount is for the county outside of this university that you're using? The university is in the town, but I'm Pretend they're not there. <laughs> <laughs> and you are going all over this place doing uh, about what 368000 is what I'm carrying in our budget as revenue from the fire district less some of the expenses that we pay back to the county. 
316. Which, interesting to you, so it's a couple thousand. Would you say you have more calls outside the university or inside the university? So we, we continually go back and forth with numbers to fit it on the time of year. I but bet. in general, the, uh, the Elon University is our biggest customer, and we run more towns, more calls to the university than we do the town in general or the outside district. Do you meet with the university about this issue? Regularly. <laughs> <laughs> That's a deal. I know they're. They and they don't have to pay sales tax on things they that they don't buy. Pay yeah. pay tax Okay, that, that just, that I'm not going to lie to you, and I'm not going to beat up because I think they're an amazing university. I, I'm out kidding. I praise them. But I think this is extremely unfair. We, we, when we you've are, got we happy to that <laughs> right there to help you make a difference for the majority of your calls, whatever time of year it is, because I want every student going to that school to be safe. Absolutely. But I also want everybody not going to that school, wherever you're going to, to also be safe. And I know that's what all of you guys in this building do. But I, I think that's a, I don't know. It's a good deal. That's like a. That's Thank a, you, Mr. Cohen. Mm -hmm. you, you get 86000 a year from Elon University. 83. I, I think it's about 83, 83. this year. It'll go, it's going up 2% a year. How much do you get from Twin Lakes? 54 or 56000 What's your call volume look like there? Uh, I live near a nursing home out in yep. southern Burlington, and uh, I hear an ambulance or fire and a, and a fire truck mm -hmm. there at almost on a daily basis. It seems yep. like it, it's it's roughly around ten percent of our call volume. And your stuff breaks too, doesn't it? Absolutely, <laughs> we are we are well over our maintenance budget as well. <laughs> so you're just going to park it, and then when your budget starts back up, you'll fix something else. No. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Any other questions? We thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Okay, Fawcett. Wow. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Jimmy Westbrook, Fawcett Fire Department, Stage 7. Um, our current tax rate was $0.12 cent on $100. Uh, the board met and decided to go with $0.08, cent, which re that reduced it by four pennies. Um, should generate right at 56, 51000 extra dollars in the budget for this upcoming budget. Uh, we have been seeing growth of around 15000 per year. Um, so if you take 15 away from that 51, our budget's increasing 36,420, um, with going eight cent. Revenue neutral was seven and a half. Inflation neutral was 0.788. Uh, we took the eight to generate a little extra money. Uh, October 22, we signed a contract on a new engine to replace a 28 year old truck. Um, we signed a contract that was $793,000. Um, along with the other fire departments, we're trying to do stuff for our paid staff, increase salaries, increase part-time pay to have staffing during the day. Currently, I'm one guy short on a 24-hour shift guy. Um, zero applications. That opening has been open since October of 22. No one has applied. Um, as other chiefs stated, maintenance is out the roof. Um, so we're just trying to generate a little bit extra money to help us out in the near future. Uh, we just, we're almost finished paying on one truck that was bought in 2017. Uh, we took $150,000 out of our cash investments and put towards that truck. Um, because the board didn't want to have two truck payments at the same time. Yeah. Currently on that one truck, we're paying $63,000 a year. Um, with the new truck, that's probably going up at least 20000 
with a truck being so much. And we talk about prices of apparatus. I met with the board in 2021 and we had a price of an engine for 646000 And October 22, that price increased to 793000 So it's, it's ridiculous. Um, that's my justification. If y'all have any questions, concerns, complaints. Mr. Turner. Chief Westbrook, was there any opposition to your proposed tax rate at your public hearing? No, sir, it was not. Thank you. Mr. Carter. No questions. Mr. Lashley. No questions. Ms. Thompson. You were part of that grant, right? Yes, ma'am. So that really helped you guys. <laughs> Extremely. Yeah. Yep. And, and then, like, your engine that you just talked about that you waited, what, whatever. Yeah, it's 28 out. years old right now. When okay. we get the new engine, it'll be 30. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to rush things. Um, it's it's kind of like my roast. Right. It's the same cow, but for some reason he gets more expensive every week. Gotcha. Um, thank goodness for that grant. That's life saving for you guys because yeah. you save everybody else. It was life saving for all five fire departments. I think. I just really appreciate the fact you went in together. I wish there was some way that we could apply for all kinds of grants to really team up all of you guys to really benefit you, not just certain times of the year. Because there is no certain time of the year that you need something. It is constant. Yeah, if that grant hadn't come available, just like the rest of them, we would have borrowed the money. Yeah. Some type of financing, and that'd have been another payment that we would have made. You know, it's something when nonprofits have to occur grants. I mean, debt because you don't sell widgets or oranges. You don't sell anything, and that's you think, how in the world are we going to do this? It's like owning the mafia or something. That's great. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? I have no. Anybody have any further questions? We thank you. Thank y'all. Thank you. Okay, Hall River. Hey, my name is Tyler Franklin, Hall River Fire Chief. Um, our tax rate in Hall River was 13 and a half cent, and we are requesting 9.48 cent on the hundred. Um, just to put that in a little perspective, um, going to revenue neutral rate, which is what's on the paper of 9.1, that brought us about $8,700. Um, the revenue neutral with inflation was 9.48, which is what we're requesting. That brings about $21,808. Um, we had an issue with one of our trucks, which is 31 years old, and it's cost us $12,000 to fix. Um, it's currently sitting in the shop now, and it's been out of service for about three months. Um, right before that, we had another engine go down, so it was actually down to one engine for the town limits of Hall River. And just like Mebane, just like Elon, we are a municipal fire department. So we are split between county and town. Um, and part of my budget does come from the town. Part of it does come from the county, just the same. So our justification for the request is pretty much the inflation of working on trucks. I'm um, just like everybody else has had issues with truck maintenance, finding people to work on them, the increase in that. Um, we would like to increase our part-time staff as well um, to cover us seven days a week. Um, we currently have three 24-hour staff people that work a 3-4 schedule, which is most common around here, and um, we have the fire chief, which is me. So during the day, we're about three people plus the volunteers that will show up, and we're down to about 16 volunteers. I will take questions at this time if y'all have any. Ms. Thompson. Um. I think I was at your place for the safe project safe neighborhood mm -hmm. that, was, that was a room full of unbelievable people yeah. I thought golly I should confess to some <laughs> but um you're like everybody else with your old fire trucks and every, I mean yes, what happens if you don't have a truck who covers uh, you you rent one or like we've no, done no, in the no. past I mean, we, who um, ha what if you go out you get an alarm and it won't crank who covers you we have mutual aid departments for that Okay. Um, that's not what they're for. They're for staffing and helping us with uh, getting extra people to the scene, extra trucks that yeah. the town obviously can't get. Um, but in the case of something like that was to happen, we would have to rely on a mutual aid department. And luckily for us, we're centrally located, so we get Graham, Eben, Fawcett, Sweeps, PG, 
um, we got all them around us, but unfortunately some other departments may not. So, Because you don't just have one fire at a time, right? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> That's what I thought. Who fixes these trucks? He must be a millionaire. There's a lot of places, but we take ours to Fire Connections in Rocky Mountain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we should be mechanics for fire trucks. Tell me. Mr. Lash. Uh, I have some questions, but I don't know how to ask them. I'll try to answer them the best I can. <laughs> I'll, let, I'll, let, I'll, I'll let someone go. Uh, I'm just looking at your uh, your budget for the fire department for 22-23. Uh, and I see a number of 466, 518 of the 22-23 budget. If you'll give me 10 seconds, I will know how to ask this, this question. Okay. While he's waiting, Chief, uh, was there any opposition to your proposed tax rate at your public hearing? Is that it, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Turner? You're good? Okay. I'm um, just looking at your um, your 22-23 budget. That yes. I'm, I'm sure that that's how uh, I'm seeing a 466-518 number. Yes, sir. And I'm seeing your manager's recommendation budget, uh, 529-375. Okay. I'm just uh, I, I see that the council hasn't approved this yet. Can you? Tell me so, um, yes, manager's recommendation is 529. So they have a, we were running behind on our budget process. Um, they're set for the 19th to actually accept this budget. June 19th. They're gonna have their public hearing then so for the budget. Does so. the uh, Hall River manager, uh, she's pretty much okay with this 529, 375 number for you? Sean Tensor and Leslie Gonzalez has worked to get to that number, yes. Okay. All right, so I can take the 529 number as a good firm number. Like, that's the number that you're expecting yes, from sir. your manager's request. Okay, uh, that, that leads me to my question. Uh, when I look at these numbers and how they're stacked, um, this is way out of line versus an inflation rate. And I'm giving you an inflation rate of 6%, which is much lower than that. It's m m basically 5.1. And what I'm looking at is I'm looking at that's like a 20% increase year over year, which is out of, out of line. At a, at just out of line about how, how other things are going up. I know your salaries are going up yes. at a 10% clip, so I can sort of see where you would maybe get that 20% number, but uh, even granting you the 10% increase in salaries, uh, right. I just think your, your numbers just uh, are, are, are higher than, than your peers from other uh, right. so fire departments who have come in. Try to answer this the best I can. We do have that county money or the town money that comes into play. Um, so, to, for example, um, the projected value at our revenue neutral rate plus inflation from the county is $333,353. Um, the rest of that from the 529, 375 that's is that's covered the by the town. There you go. You we have a 2.8 20 district in the, ta in the town. So. I'm good. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. good. Any other questions? Mr. Turner. No, sir. Mr. Carter. I have none. Thank, right, you. thank you. Okay, North Central Alamance. Good afternoon. My name is Joey Green. I'm the fire chief with North Central Alamance Fire Department. Mm -hmm. And we're also live streaming this tell everybody where that is north central alamance is in uh, god's country as i like to say it's uh <laughs> northern northern central part of alamance county uh right in between the the fingers of the two creeks that form lake camac and if you look at lake camac it looks like an alligator our fire department sits right in the in the back of its mouth yeah uh, so uh you pass through our fire district if you go to yanceville if you go up, in most cases a lot of cases if you go up 62 or union ridge road into Alam into caswell county um, today I'm here to talk about our proposed budget. Uh, North Central prior to the revaluation was at 11 and a half cent uh, on $100. Um, the revenue neutral rate that was proposed by the county uh, that we voted on the first before the revision um, was 7.68 cents on the dollar. 
uh, our board of directors and our fire department has met and uh, our board and along with our tax uh, we went, went through all the procedures with the hearing and nine cents on the hundred dollars we feel like uh, helps us out the most uh, if you look at our numbers overall we we are uh, we are one of if not the lower funded fire fire districts in the county just based on our taxable income we really don't have a lot we've got farms uh, we've got churches we don't have really any any big businesses we don't have any any box stores um, uh, any meals or anything that contributes heavily towards our tax base so that being said we're very much a farm and bedroom community um, which makes it a lovely place however we still have to meet the same needs uh, as all of the other fire departments and all the other districts in the county um, we also have a brand new uh, high school being built in our district uh, clover garden school uh, clover garden high school will be uh, it's in the construction right now and it should be open um, sometime in 2024 or 2025 um, and again that adds to our our response uh, responsibility and accountability but we really are not getting anything financially um, from them to support them um, we had our public meeting on april the 16th with no opposition um, we have the same needs basically as my 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 peers have stood up and described we have a, a our oldest fire truck is a 1967 model um it is a, it's an off-road brush truck uh, but we have an 87 and 97 and, and a couple of low 2000s we did uh, just purchase a new fire truck for us um, in 2022 and um, the way we were able to afford that was was through savings through our over years with our our capital outlay um, but we were we were able to find and purchase a demo truck um, and that same truck had we had we ordered that truck and gone through the same process brand new and customizing it we would have spent over a hundred thousand dollars more um, if you can believe that and it continues to go up every time you call um, we have one paid position in our fire in our uh, north central it is a monday to friday position uh, other than that we are 100 percent volunteer we've got 27 uh, volunteers on our roster um, we have a need to grow our staff um, over if we look at a 10-year plan uh, and you look at the growth the county is seeing uh, it would be reasonable to believe that our district has a great chance of growing as we have the farms and we have land and so when we look at a 10-year plan it's un not unreasonable to believe that we would have to ramp up and have more staff and even around the clock staff eventually there's no way we can get to that with the proposed budget with all due respect um, from the county um, just further justifying our belief that uh, nine cents will, will help us it won't even get us to where where we ultimately need to be but would certainly get us in a better direction our, our, fire, our, our building is 40 years old uh, and we have ongoing maintenance with that uh, I will say we are we are a very talented group as as all my brothers and sisters are and to answer your question miss thompson we learn how to work on a lot of the things ourselves mm -hmm. um, and when it comes to the big the big ticket items we do have to hire that out but we have learned how to work on a lot of things and, and i'll be honest a lot of the equipment that we have and use um, is is second hand and has been donated and given to us from other districts in here and other fire other fire departments uh, i feel like we are very resourceful and we we ultimately do uh, try to stretch and look at each each dollar we spend um, with scrutiny Mr. Turner. one other note we were part of the grants as well and I'll be honest um, the grants are life-saving to us um, as much as anyone we we have we've been benefited from it, the Amy Gailey uh, and from from some some FEMA grants the grant we went in with was station two and others the air packs uh, we've been able to replace radios and air packs otherwise we would not have had the funds to do and that 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 feel like that was heaven sent that led us to be able to to purchase a fire truck that was that was replacing one over 30 years old so chief you got a lot of needs that you you listed here in your in your in your materials um, what's the most important need for you this year like wh where would you put this money this year 
this year we're we're with with a new truck we're repairing maintenance we've got our turnout gear covered and we've got our radios so this year we're focusing on repairing the building we've got some some building repairs to be made to both the roof and the sides and then we would eventually have to upgrade our fire department if we were to have around the clock staffing with sleeping quarters and things not not say that we can get all that done in this but uh we would focus a lot of that on our on the upkeep of our building and getting another 40 years out of it so you're staffing staffing we we have later well no we have um, uh we have a little bit of extra money i put in the budget for staffing ramping up towards uh the idea was that we could pay some part-time help that would help us with when our paid staff is off and then maybe encourage us to to try to delve into uh, holidays, weekends, um, and maybe even times when we may have the need for an additional man. For example, uh, we have a triathlon that happens in our community every year, and there's certain times when there may be a, a, a day that we had a need to, we felt the need to it'd be safer to have another staff. Okay, thank you. Mr. Carr, almost everything in your district is residential. Is that correct? Residential and farms, that's correct. Okay. Churches. I have no questions. You talked about Lake Camac. Yes, that's ma'am. Camp Greenleaves. Yes. I did. I went up to their program last year. Amazing. Special needs kids. Uh, is that you guys, if there's a call? So I'm uh, glad you asked. Camp uh, Greenleaves and actually Lake Camac belong to the city of Burlington. However, we are first response. Okay. We're not, we don't get any, any financial benefit from that, but we do. We put the sweat equity in as far as responding and, and owning responsibility. Um, for it for any scene or any call there okay. we do have the option to engage and involve burlington and burlington police and burlington fire are notified and dispatched whenever we have that but they're 15 minutes out it's all about time sometimes how many volunteers do you have we have 27 on the roster that's good for the size we're we are we are i feel like we are the epitome of a volunteer fire department yeah probably recognizes the fact that you're what your demographic is we are and like i said we don't we don't have any paid staff and much like others you know I'm, i don't i don't i don't get a, a red cent for for doing anything matter of fact i spend a lot of time and money you get stars in your career trust me i'm not i'm not doing it for that but thank you <laughs> me either <laughs> and then one other question about the uh the community that's a concern i have too so um, I think we grow our own is the way, and I don't know how a better way to say that, but I'll say that I'm a multi-generation uh, fireman, and my and I have two kids that are junior firemen fighters, and and a lot of our fire department is made up of multi-generation, and without that, I don't know where we would be, yeah. and if you took that part out of it, it would really be scary. So I'm all for anything that we can do to to boast and to um, to to encourage folks who volunteer. Even if people, you don't have to grow up here, right? But just a uh, quick. Uh a question do you see that the volunteer fire departments will gain any benefit from the new fire training center that's going to be a part of ACC's uh, uh, public safety training center I, I'm <clears throat> I'm really not uh, educated enough to, uh, to officially speak on that I will say this the county this county has a great group of fire chiefs and fire departments that work well together in my tenure and and as far as so um, Burlington um, Elon there are other folks um Pleasant Grove has a train. It's a, AO. They uh, they all have uh, things that that um, they've burn burn buildings and training towers and and they all um, as long as they're not using have whenever we have called to ask to use those training facilities have been they've been more than willing. Uh, very encouraging. Matter of fact, they usually turn it into multi-company training opportunities. Not not sure if that's answering your question, but um, usually most things that become that are in the county become somewhat available for us to use. I hope that would be the case. Right. Any other questions? Just thank you. Thank you. thank you. Thank you for what you do. Northeastern Alabama. Do we penalize you for jumping up? No. <laughs> yeah. So Northeastern Alamance. Uh, also, we have a name, uh, Pleasant Grove. So mm -hmm. we get called different different names. So uh, my name is Jason Anderson. I'm a volunteer chief there. Uh, being a volunteer chief with this department, I rely heavily with budget type things on former chief and board treasurer Jimmy Roney. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't able to be here today. Um, he was doing some stuff with his grandson. So 
with our uh, our former um, tax rate was 12 cents our revenue neutral was 0 0.0797 and our requested is 0 0.083 and we had our public hearing on 4-3 and went through the board approval at the next board meeting and had that all approved um, what we plan to do with those those funds for this year like uh, some of you asked was um, some building same same story as what everybody else is doing we're uh, dealing with staffing issues we don't have 24 hours at Pleasant Grove we have uh, we cover a time frame from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, with part-time staff from other stations when they get off with their 24-hour shift they come to our station and work uh, through, through our shifts. Well, like I said, we cover that from six to six, and what we're planning to do is extend those hours to the weekend now. We only do, been doing it Monday through Friday. We plan now to do it uh, seven days, and that's what we wanna do. Also, uh, we have, like I said, an old building. We uh, got some quotes on new bay doors. Uh, nobody wants to work on the old stuff anymore. They wanna replace them. Uh, that's around eighty thousand dollars. We're also uh, talking about uh, retention. So uh, some of the other chiefs were talking about explorers and junior firefighters. Uh, what we're trying to do is is make some makeshift accommodations with furniture and uh, what we call house tones. Uh, some notifications when we have a call because we have some younger guys and explorers that are wanting to spend the night at at the station and where we are we just don't have those accommodations so we want to use some money to uh, make it make it you know uh, appealing to them so they'll want to be there and, and and run calls so that's that's some of the things that we're planning on doing with the money also we uh, sign a contract for a new truck just like the same stories that some of the other departments uh, trucks have went up we're replacing a 1989 truck and um, hopefully that truck started out is around 690,000 and has went uh, with equipment and everything is pushed up to around 800,000 so I'll introduce I'll entertain any questions that anybody has is there like a fire truck dealership like where is where is this deal where There's are you getting it from it, it's it's like Ford and Chevrolet so it's, it's yeah. whatever uh, whatever you can get the best deal on that will the the people that will build the truck like you want it and the needs for your department okay is there any is that in North Carolina is there one in North Carolina I don't think there is one in North Carolina. Anchor Richie they build smaller trucks but they do uh, their their specialty is smaller trucks, but they have subcontracted with to do some of the larger trucks. Yep. Okay, thanks. Chief, was there any opposition to your proposed tax rate at your public hearing? No, sir. Thank you. Any other questions? We thank you. Thank you. Hey, Snook Camp. My name is Franklin Clapp. I'm the treasurer for Snow Camp Volunteer Fire Department. Um, we have um, a current rate of 12 and a half cents. Our revenue neutral was 8.33 and our inflation neutral was 8.73. And we uh, had our hearing on March the 26th of 2023 and there was no opposition to the um, uh, rate we chose to go with uh, inflation neutral the 8.733 and the board approved afterwards and signed off on it we have um, two full-time pay staff 24-hour coverage we're short um, one full paid staff personnel um, at the moment um, we seem to have the same like everybody else is saying with the staffing issues what we're seeing is we seem to be a stepping stone for a lot of young firefighters that are coming out of school or trying to get their start, go to a rural department that has paid and um, basically get some time in, get some time under their belt and move on to Greensboro, Burlington, Chapel Hill, Raleigh locations. So it's always a revolving door when we do find someone. Um, 
we are the largest volunteer district in the county. We have one main station and three substations. Um, the reason for the three substations was years ago, it was decided to try to help all of our um, community homeowners in our district have a lower interest rate uh, for their fire tax. So by putting in those substations, we got them closer to an actual fire station, which therefore decreased their tax rate for the fire tax on their insurance. Um, we currently have um, frontline engines and tankers that are over 20 years old, just like everybody else, that um, we end up doing a lot of the smaller repairs on when we can. Um, most people in here know Clay Thompson. Um, he's been the chief uh, in the past at our department and um, if it wasn't for that man right there, we'd have a lot more expenses in fixing equipment and stuff like that because he's a guru when it comes to fixing these fire trucks. He's been doing it for years. The, um, we have a lot of accounts that we have set up to purchase trucks in the future, so we're setting money aside for trucks, turnout gear, air packs, so we don't run into a situation where we need to borrow a bunch of money from the bank and waste taxpayer money making interest payments on loans and stuff like that. So that's what I have. Anyone, any questions? If Sylvan had an issue, elementary school, you guys are it, right? Yes, ma'am. Did you guys do the Yale Country Kitchen fire? Yes, ma'am. That was something. Yes, ma'am, it was. Any other questions? We thank you. All right, thank you. Just to give all you guys some idea, we have to set a tax rate for both our districts and the county itself uh, and have it in place before June 30 or only before June 30. In reality, it'll be at our next meeting. Uh, we've had our public hearing. We've now heard, thank goodness from all you guys, and really, and when I say guys, I do not exclude females, by the way. So uh, I have three daughters and one son. I call everybody guys. So, uh, but having said that, we really appreciate all, all of your input. Uh, and we'll set your rates when we set the county rate. Can I ask just a question? Um, when I first got on the commissioners, I brought um, someone here to talk to our first responders in the, in the city, so to speak, county, whatever. Um, about their mental health and about self-care. What do you guys do for that? Because you're on front lines just like everybody else. It's really no different, just your zip code. Are you taking care of yourself? I can probably speak for that. Um, there's five or six of us. Um, I'll be the one of them. I did the 501c3 stuff for it. Um, we do have a peer support group in the county. Okay. Um, that was, I don't know, started three three, four years ago. Um, we saw the need for it. We call up, you know, we contact people at the county level we'll try to get some kind of resources. Um, we had an incident where I needed somebody, you know, to talk to somebody. Made four phone calls, I'm still waiting on three of them. Yeah. Um, so we started a peer support group. We go out to departments that request us. Um, we have a long list of contacts um, we do have a, a clinical person on our group she has seen several people for free um, and we do have outside the county peer support groups that can come in if if need be so I'm just checking because tragedy is tragedy yeah. and I know you see it no matter what you do um, so. you know I like to see more support in the county, you know, yeah. grant funds or anything to where we can expand that. I mean, it's hard. I mean, it's like the volunteer fire department, it's hard to find people that can do that, um, take the time. You know, it's, if one fire department has an incident, they call, you know, you got to get three or four people together within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it's taxing. It goes home with you, so. I just want to make sure because people in the business of taking care of everybody else 
always never take good care of themselves. They just don't have time. They're too busy saving the world, and many times burnout is extremely serious. So I just appreciate you all. Uh, you're like our Navy SEALs when it comes to fire. So. Do most of y'all have a, a chaplain within your agencies? That's what I was thinking. Okay, county manager. Are we ready to move on to the next item on the agenda? We have a few adjustments that we wanted to walk you through related to the manager's recommended budget and what's captured in the new document for you. And I'm getting rumblings from other commissioners that they want to take a 10 minute break. Okay. Good. Session. Ready for us to go over You're the ready. adjustments? I yes, think Susan's going to go through those about three three highlights. We want to bring to your attention. This is a new book. This, this is with a new book. book. That's correct. Uh, but regardless of these changes, any notes that you've made in your existing books, we can use those for discussions today. It's not going to affect those numbers greatly. Um, first it, update that we had was for our fire district funds. We realized that there was a uh, clerical error in the format of the collection rate it was originally budgeted at 99.5 percent and we wanted to reflect that at a hundred percent which is an overall increase of about thirty three hundred dollars to the fund and that is reflected on page 57 of your books um, the second increase that i wanted to check uh, double check with you guys was that on our emergency telephone system fund we received up did it, yes sir can we go to page number first so we can go to that'll be fine right that one was 57. Mm -hmm. so if you go to page number 62 and i'm pulling these from our fund summaries <clears throat> new 62. Oh, yes ma'am okay. Page 62 all right so for page 62 it's going to be our emergency telephone service fund and we received notification from the state of North Carolina that the 911 proceeds that we would receive from the state was going to be reduced to seven hundred seventeen thousand five hundred ninety three dollars which they were originally budgeted at eight ninety nine three eighty so to go ahead and get those changes incorporated into the budget without having a budget amendment at the first of the next year, we adjusted the use of fund balance for that fund to be 208,787. There are no changes to their expenditures. That is all revenue. Can you say that again? Sure. Uh, there are no change to the expenditures. Revenue change is to budget $208,787 of fund balance and reduce the state funding to $717,593. You said that it's a hit to the fund balance. That's correct. Okay. I thought you said no additional expenditures. It's no additional expenditures. We're it's the revenue is short. It's the revenue okay. will be shorted by the state. Yes, sir. Okay, and then our last update, um, it's actually gonna be across several pages uh, because it affects two different departments. But if you turn to page number 54 and 55, that's gonna be our general fund summary expenditures. I don't mean that time. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> I thought I did. <laughs> Um, so we realized going back Just through. Just wake you up, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we realized going through that we needed to also include some training pay for our EMS staff. They are required to have 36 hours. That would um, create an additional expense of $116,901. Um, then also realized that there was a position in the library for a passport. Um, admit admin person there so that was a reduction to the general fund budget of 57,189 
that resulted in us needing to then budget an additional $59,712 for fund balance to even out those expenses. So you're taking from the library, adding to the training. Yes. Okay. Yes. Those were corrections that should have been made prior. Mm -hmm. I had decided not to fill that passport position, I think back in March maybe, and it just missed it in the budget. So we're cutting that one. And the training for EMS has been left out in the past, and I think that's part of the um, cause for why their budget comes up short every year. So we're hoping this adjustment on the front end will help offset some of that later on. So this will bring the general fund budget now to $217,587,666. Was that again, Sure, $217,587,666. And after today's meeting, the new updated version will be posted to the website. So you got a hit and you have a, you, you have an offset and a hit. So what's the total offset, what's the total hit to fund balance for those two things you just mentioned? $59,712. And when you add that to the 208787, what's that total? I'm sorry, add it to which number? When you add it to the other hit that we just talked about, the 208,787. 267,000. 267. Round up 268. Yes, but now the emergency telephone sir, uh, fund does not impact the general fund. It does not. It does not. That is a completely separate fund okay. in and of itself. So the only hit to general fund is, is the $59,712. 59, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. We need to do something with those last three digits in that number. I that agree. I agree. <laughs> Thank you. Just round it up to, to 70. <laughs> we'll add $4. That's right. <laughs> sure. So the, that reflects all the adjustments that we had uh, to this document. Hopefully we're on the same page. So the next thing on the budget was um, just a general discussion from the board on how you'd like to make adjustments to the general fund. And we can pull up a spreadsheet and sort of track those adjustments and then get to a bottom line wherever you'd like that to be. Um, we felt like this was probably the simplest way. So under the target, um, if you want to shoot for revenue neutral, we have the reduction that it would require for us to get there. If you want to shoot for the inflationary neutral, we have that as well. Or we can just start listing cuts and see where we get. We'll list those uh, on the left column there. Bill, I'm going to suggest you and I have talked a lot about the numbers. Uh, why don't you start off on recommended cuts? Okay, you sure you want me to go first this time? I went first last time. I'll go first if you want me to. Go ahead. I went first last time. I took a lot of time. I and I just don't want to make sure everyone has a, an opportunity to say yeah. what they want. But the only reason I asked that was because you and I have talked more than I, than oh, I yeah, have. Oh yeah, well I'm, I'm ready. I just didn't want to but, uh, suck up all the air in the room. Craig, why don't you start out? Well, it's going to build on what uh, Commissioner Lassie talked about last time, so okay. I think it's I think it's keeping with that. Um, first of all, the the target number. What number are you using for revenue neutral? Is that a rounded number or not? Is it not is rounded. not rounded. We went with the absolute pure number of forty-two fifty-nine. Okay. Um, if we start with the uh, with the Davenport model for ABSS. Well, let me back up and say that, that I believe, after looking at these numbers for a couple of weeks, that there is a combination of funds existing in the system now and cuts that we can make to get to revenue neutral. Mm -hmm. um, th there's existing, I think it's, it's a reapportionment of some funds that uh, I think can get us a long way. Um, first of all, if you, the 5.64 cents that is now allocated every year as a rev new revenue stream to the ABSS capital reserves. What's that in a dollar value number currently? Bear with me just one second. 
nine million something. Nine point two. Nine million three hundred thirty-four thousand seven hundred. Okay. And if we were to take out um, the value of one penny, which would be two five two point five one four three zero one. Yep. Um, does that leave you with sufficient funds to cover the debt service on existing debt for ABSS? Yes. Does it also allow you to cover additional debt service for ABSS should ABS at some time in the future seek an additional $19 million in, in funds that and bond issuance that are not yet uh, realized? Yes. Okay. So let's for the sake of conversation at this point, put 2.514301 back into the, the county's general fund. Now, if you also, um, we, we've got $700,843 that are economic development projects that are for the airport, which we anticipate a quick return in, in allowing aircraft to come to the county and also about $300,000 for a railroad spur in Medmen that we hope is going to be an economic development investment and bring additional revenues with firms who want to use that. If I am comfortable with putting that money uh, in, into the, or taking that money from the general fund and not from current revenues, current year's revenues, which would also, I think, reduce your number by $700,843. Now, in addition to that, I would I would like us to do an audit of that in a year to see how much we how much um, revenue we can actually attribute towards the, those investments to make sure that we made the right decision. But I think, for the sake of argument here, I would be comfortable using that money as well. Um, capital the capital plan we authorized a couple weeks ago a 2.3 million dollar. Uh, CIP for the county yearly for the next five years. I'm comfortable with moving some of the uh, monies from our capital reserve to cover that in the current year and also eliminating some of the expenditures in the current year and moving those forward to the right to be spent in later years. Um, I think, um, well, am I right that there is $11.614 million in current ABS and current county capital reserves? Access to current cap and in some way access to that not that money. I'm sorry, that figure again. Eleven point six one four million dollars. Ten million six fifty four. The ten million was what we had yep. said we would spend towards the courthouse. Right. That was the full capital reserve balance. But there was also an additional million that we had talked about being available, right? So that million is right. included in that ten million figure. Yeah. Ten million six hundred fifty four thousand seven hundred seventy four. 53 is our current total. You said 1064? Ten, I'm sorry. 10 million six hundred fifty four thousand seven hundred seventy four dollars and fifty three cents. Okay. We talked about an 11 million dollar number. Is that what the, that what number was not correct? So where the 11 million is coming into play is that in the current fiscal year we are expected to transfer $1.4 million into the capital reserve fund due to the step down of county debt service. So that's where the additional million dollars come from. Okay, so it would be possible to use that million dollars in the current budget mm -hmm. to further offset the 7.1 figure. That's correct. I'd be comfortable using one million of that plus the 654,000, which would leave, I'm sorry, the six, Fifty four seven seven four fifty three, which would leave ten million dollars in the capital reserves, which we could choose to use at a different point or not. Mm -hmm. right. So that would be eleven point six five four seven seven four point fifty three. That would bring that number down. No. Yes. I thought I heard you say you wanted to do a million. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, and I added the six. 54774.53 number. Okay. And we can talk about, the, you know, we can bat this around a bit, but I'm just trying to. Well, I think you did a good job there, Commissioner Turner, yeah. finding the, the $600,000. Yeah. So I would suggest that we actually, see, my number on that was 800000 I wanted to take, I wanted that capital improvement plan. Yeah. I wanted that to be $200,000. I want to take $800,000 out of that. In expenses? 
No. Just that one. I didn't look at your 654 number. I was just looking at the million eight. Right. And what I did is I looked at what you had told me before. I just want to make sure that I have this right. I was going off the penny plan, the 0 0.96 of a penny for the county, which gives me about 1.525 million. And I was going to suggest, could you use that number that you used the last time? And if you could say yes, then I could take the balance of that and stick it on that number. Which basically you did, but you just took the whole million bucks. And all I was suggesting is like, yeah. instead of making it 1.6, make it 1.4. Yeah. So That's two, just to put, give contexts. you the number that you needed for the capital improvement. So there are two different yeah. things here. So the penny plan, I believe, was used to fund equipment yes. and vehicle okay. type That's things. So that went away. Okay. And in this manager's recommended budget, those type of needs were funded with the leftover pandemic funds. Okay. I already took the penny. Gotcha. And appropriated it in the budget. Okay. The CIP had a $2.3 million mm -hmm. expenditure, which we've now taken out 1.6 million of that to come mm -hmm. from capital mm -hmm. reserves. Okay, so that's about point, I'm looking at point seven hundred thousand dollars left over. And I guess my question is, sure. would, would that would that be enough to get you done? Because I like Commissioner Turner's number here. I'm just trying to square so it off between the number that I, I think we need to look at the projects that were being funded. Remember, there's a million for ball fields. Mm -hmm. So that leaves you very little money to take care of your roofing and HVAC needs. Okay. I can do the math on the, on the Um I just want to make case. sure we haven't we haven't taken the B ever Jordan Ballfield away. No. No, in fact right. this is all just revenue shifting, so yes. mm -hmm. there's nothing there's no expenditure change yet. Right. Right. That, but I think what he is what Commissioner Lashley was suggesting would require an expenditure well, change. Well I'm I'm not unless there I yet. misheard that. I'm getting there. <laughs> okay. My fault. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting there. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I apologize ahead. for cutting you off. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Because you're on a roll here. I so I like what you got going on. Well, a quick question you just brought up. The um, COVID funds. The pandemic funds. Pandemic funds. Yes. They're talking about a, the federal feds are talking about a clawback or doing a clawback. Mm -hmm. Have we committed all those monies so that we will not have to lose any of those funds we have in? I believe the well, county I attorney Mr. is. Stevens, and we are not losing any our money. Correct. Okay, we're under. We're we're okay. We're fine. Well, that was yep. the concern I had that we had some that might might lose. Although we've not designated it, it's already been paid to us, and they're not taking monies back that have already been spent. Right. Did Correct. we capture that accurately? Yeah. Okay. So so far, I'm not. I'm not. There's no cuts up there. It's just reallocations of current dollars in the system Correct. but if in addition if we're talking about capital reserve if you what's that we do need to revise one number um, Commissioner Turner and that is the 1.654754 for the CIP needs right now our estimated balance that we would have at the end of this fiscal year is one million six hundred fourteen thousand ten dollars but why don't we make that change there we go yeah then if in addition you were to take out you were not you you, you didn't expend five hundred and fifty thousand dollars of the 2.3 million this year on cip that's the part that that you would shift mm -hmm. so out of the 10 projects or so it would be finding five hundred fifty thousand dollars savings either pushing something off or pushing a portion of something off or just moving it even to next July. So I think let's let's put that up there and see if that's if, how we feel about that. But that would be $550,000 in savings, which is an actual cut. Okay, so a reduction of CIP spending by $550,000. Correct. By next July, you mean July 2024? You mean next fiscal year. Yep. Next fiscal year. Say 550? 550. Um, salaries. 
if you were if instead of doing a five percent cola and a four and a three percent merit, you reduced it to a four percent cola and a three percent merit, that would save seven hundred thousand dollars. So seven seven three hundred and sixty-two. Plus, you're gonna you're gonna add. Did you say you're gonna add no, the merit? You're gonna stay at three. Stay at three. My bust. You're right. You're dead on. Can you just say again? Sorry. The cola. It's a four. It's it's just a reduction of one percent cola. Okay. Which would be a reduction of seven hundred forty-eight five. Yeah, seven forty-eight. Seven fifteen. Four seven seven. Four seven four seven. seven. Okay. Give me that again, please. It is seven. it is a four percent cola. It's it's just a one percent reduction in cola. That's right. that's the only change. Right. But based on managers managers recommended. Mm -hmm. Give me the number it saves. Uh, seven hundred forty-eight thousand four hundred and seventy-seven dollars. Thank you. If, in addition, you were to obtain cuts in the legal budget of $100,000, Mr. Stevens, how do you feel about that? Um, I, I think, well, like I said to you before, um, it's difficult for us to really know from one year to the next what we're going to be spending on outside counsel. Um, we're in a somewhat unique position there in that our expenses are dictated by the litigation that comes in and so we're not always able to, to plan those out I will say we have some litigation ongoing at this point that's going to start incurring costs against that outside council budget uh, more over the next year than it has over the past year but our expenses related to day-to-day -day costs for outside council expenses have come down so I, I as long as the board is willing to entertain my approach for more funds as needed if we incur additional costs, then we can sustain $100,000 less. So let's just put it in there for the sake of putting it in there for a second. Um, so that's $100,000 reduction in legal. Um, if you did a, a similar $100,000 in reduction in elections, <laughs> and I understand the elections budget is based on the worst case, but how would you feel about well, uh, that effect of, of elections on that? Um, we can gamble that we don't have a second primary right. and that would pretty much cover the you know but if that we won't know until right. um, after March if we would have that um, possibly in May also um, you do know we get reimbursed for the uh, municipal elections which is in October and November if we have a primary um, and in the 23 in 21 um, we received uh, we were reimbursed for um, put the glasses on so I can see here um, the reimbursement was from the Burlington primary and the end of all the municipalities it was a total of a uh, little over $162,000. So anticipate if we have a primary and then the municipal elections, you know, we're reading that much is reimbursed back to the county as well. So the, the downside of doing this is if we had too many elections in the year, you'd have to seek some more additional funds. Correct. Okay. Exactly. I mean, we're, we're definitely going to have the November. Right. We'll definitely have the March. Right. Um, Question, we won't know until filing in July right. if we'll have a municipal primary, but from the phone calls we've gotten so far and people coming in the office, it's, we are anticipating so uh, have, October primary. And if you have that, then you couldn't live with the with the cut? No, no, no. Oh. Uh, no, what I'm saying is that those two we would be reimbursed for. Okay. Okay. Um, March we have the uh, presidential primary okay we possibly we will not know till after that if we would have the um, runoff right the May the second primary we can gamble that we don't the cost um, estimated for the second primary is basically around one hundred ninety four thousand dollars no no excuse me one hundred and forty thousand dollars so we could, like I said, if we have to, cut, if we do, right. if you right. cut it, and then we do come have a second primary. Uh, You'll need more I, money. I yes. would need to come to y'all for more money right. at that point. Let's put a pin in that one.
Um, if you cut one vehicle, that'd be fifty-seven thousand dollars. That was a sheriff's vehicle estimate for fifty-seven. Yes. So he has ten funded in this budget. Yes. And also, I asked for um, the positions that we have in the county that are not EMS, sheriff, or DSS that are not filled. Current and there were positions, yes. And there were 22 that are not filled. If you froze those for 90 days, well, the passports manager is on here, but you've already taken that out. I've already taken that out, yes, sir. So if you were to freeze those positions for 90 days, all 21 of them, what would the impact be? $284,974. Can we put that in there? How much? $284,974. It's a 90 day, sir. It's a 90 day. If there are, it looks like there are two library two positions, a library three position, a library assistant one. If you were just to eliminate or freeze one library two position out of those four, what would uh, that savings be? If you were to freeze that for the year? A librarian two, yeah. $60,618. Where's that located? Which which library? I think Susanna's prepared to. Uh, that's the main memorial library. Okay. Are they both that? There's actually only one librarian two position vacant right now. We've got two on here, both at main memorial. Um, no, uh, no, we recently filled. We reclassified a librarian two to a librarian one, and okay. filled that on May sixteenth. Okay. It could be a timing issue. Mm -hmm. So we may need to adjust the 284 number. Right. So there's, there should be a library 3 and then a library 2 vacant right now. Okay. So then, and then we need to adjust it a little bit further because the figure that I gave previously, the 284,000, included the 90 day freeze of the library in 2 position. So revised figure 284 becomes $269,819. Then if the library in two position were to be eliminated, frozen, frozen, that would be an additional $45,464. That would be the remaining nine months. Okay. Makes sense. Let's put that in there. It's a big B. Do we need to have a discussion about what that means to me? Yeah, memorial? let's have a discussion about what Susanna, that means. Well, well, I, well there, I mean, there are library two, library three, library one. I mean, it, I don't know what eliminating any of them might mean. Right. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, so a librarian one is an entry level librarian position for someone who has a master's degree. Um, in our system, they serve the entire county. Their position travels to all the branches filling their role. They have a specialty such as youth services, adult services, technology, emerging technologies, and they travel to meet and have programs and um, facilitate the needs at all the branches. A librarian too is a branch manager level. So they are managing the staff and the facilities um, um, of a single location. May Memorial is the one that's vacant, which is of course the largest facility, um, houses 35 staff. Um, also houses a lot of the central services that we offer. You know, like the when books come in, they all come to May Memorial and get processed, and then they get delivered by couriers to the to the locations. Um, so this person manages, yeah, the twenty the twenty two staff that are serving the Burlington and the community, um, so that myself as the branch manager doesn't, doesn't have to manage the building on top of that. The library in three position is the my assistant director. Um, which is currently vacant because she retired on April 1st. So um, in the, the, you know, the, the happy world where I have one, that is my um, sort of like HR liaison ha handling the hiring, um, the, those procedures, facilities, they supervise the branch managers and fill in when there are vacancies and when there are vacations. Um, the step up from that is of course myself, the, the director. So 
at the moment with the vacancies, I am also acting as the assistant director and the branch manager for the Maple Memorial Library. So it's been a chaotic time, but. So if we froze the library assistant one, then you'd still have the assistant operations and the library two for Maple Memorial. Which one is that? That position is not vacant at the moment, our library assistant. Library assistant one. Could be that it's not been processed in the HR system. Yet. Okay, that, that was a reclassification correcting a salary pay for someone, it's not a vacant position. Um, there's a library assistant two children's position at the Grand Library that's vacant right now. Um, I don't know what, I'm sorry. Does that change the 269 number? Yeah. Let's change. Let's change that number to what it what it would be. Yeah. Library assistant positions within the library are full time, normally full time positions that are paraprofessionals. So they, you know, fill 50 to 60 percent of their time covering a service desk, and then they have supplemental duties such as programming or usually programming, um, or offering, um, running the services that, that happen behind the scenes. Okay. The 1033 was reclassed to 1607. I can't see you. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. It should be. <laughs> so can we figure out what that new number is? All right. So I want to make be clear. What exactly are we leaving in and we're, what are we We're putting taking back here? in the library assistant one, right? Okay. Or actually, we're taking it out of the cut. <laughs> we're uncutting it. Okay, that one is now uncut. So that would still be a 90-day freeze on the librarian two and a librarian three position, correct? Well, I think... Which is you, what you're doing with all the other positions. Well, but for the 269-819 number, you have to put back in a library one who, was, who you can't freeze because they're already there. Right. So I'm just making sure that we're leaving everybody there for the 90 days. Yes. So that number is now 282,759 dollars. Okay. Rounding up to a dollar. And if you freeze the Graham Library 2 position. For the children's. I, don't, I, don't, I can't remember, what was that position? It, it's a children's programming position, so they do, um, they're one of three and a, two and a half people that do children's programming for the Grand Library. Could the, the other library assistants who are there cover that work? They've done it short term, we've never done it for a full year, so possibly, but it, you know, it may eventually come up to a problem, but okay. um, well, that's, we've done it short term with vacancies, but. Let's just leave it in for now and, and then we'll come back to it. Um, finally, the last section that I have deals with outside agencies. I understand that Camp Green Sleeves is really something that we need to do based upon federal funding or federal re regulations on athletics. Um, do you want to answer that? Yeah, I, so the advantage of Creek, Camp Green Leaves is that it provides a level of service that we don't provide at our other uh, summer camps. So when someone with uh, special needs would come to us at a traditional summer camp. We are in a position to say we can't serve you here at this camp, uh, but we have another place for you to go, and it gives us uh, that ability. So I, I don't know that we have to support it at any particular level, but it is certainly beneficial to have a place to send people that we just don't have the staffing to uh, serve at a normal summer camp. Okay. So if we leave that in and take out the other outside funding, we'd save two hundred and seventy. Four thousand dollars is that right? Uh, you're talking about the outside agencies, Crossroads, and the JCPC. Yes, the JCPC match, which is new as I understand it. Crossroads, which was originally funded uh, as art funding, which we changed in family abuse. If you took those out, it'd be two seventy four thousand in savings, if I'm understanding that correctly. That is correct. Those three All right. line items. And I thought that uh, I thought my number was going to get us farther down, but I think there have been some changes since I last looked at these, so um, I'm not down as far as I thought it would be. Uh, but what would that number be? 
I think we'd be about three hundred thousand dollars above revenue neutral. Yeah. Uh, part of that is not cutting any of the uh, elections. Is there any? Uh, is there any other thing? Is there any other? One hundred forty thousand dollars for a primary that may happen. With, I, I think we probably would need to leave that in there. But is there anything else in your, in your budget that can be tweaked? Uh, we might could be uh, we might be uh, right now we have a line item for um, an attorney, which we haven't used. Um, you know, we we use the county attorney currently, but if the Board of Elections is sued, then we would have to seek outside. Um, outside council. Council for that, uh, that's seven thousand dollars right there. Seven. Yeah, that we have budgeted in that line item. Um, we have. Just to speak to that, we've absorbed those costs and we're happy to continue to do that. They've been good stewards of the money that we've allowed them to use as part of our budget. But just to be clear, also one of the things that would be frozen, one of the positions to be frozen in, in your proposal is the currently vacant assistant county attorney position. So I know I had said before that $100,000 wouldn't probably impact our ability to work throughout the year. but. If we're going to have a quarter of our year with that position frozen, then my answer might change somewhat. Okay. I've got a couple of things. You know, like, I mean, nothing large, but uh, the emergency generator. When we get moved into our new building, um, we have a generator there. That's uh, there's like five thousand dollars budgeted for that. There's uh, you know some little things like that I could go through. And uh, when we move the uh, storage units, we use you know that's a large mm -hmm. part of uh, our budget. And could we ring thirty grand out of that thing? Yeah, I could do that. Let's go thirty grand for elections, and let's give the right honorable Mr. Stevens thirty grand back. <laughs> so seventy thousand dollars at illegal, and that's all I got. Susan had a suggestion related to elections. All right, so I need to get the information from from Ms. Hurdle. So right now, there's a hundred thousand dollars budgeted as a reimbursement from the municipalities mm -hmm. based on the election cost right should there be a second election would we then invoice the count the municipalities again okay, what do you mean by second we have a well, I'm sorry the second primary okay, so we don't if, have a second primary for uh, for municipal elections uh, there is none. so we'll have the okay. primary possibly which is in October just for Burlington mm -hmm. that's all and then um, in November is the other municipality Okay. okay, so never mind. Okay. All right, just want to make sure that was clear. Thank you. I did notice that there was a rent, building rent for Board of Elections. It's a storage unit, the rent that you're paying. Yes, we rent about six or seven storage units over um, across from the old outlets. For our support current, for and you our will supplies. continue to need those after no, the moving into the new building. No, all of you yeah. think we across Kept the street months. here that'll be everything should be housed at That's our That's what location. I was thinking we thought would happen. So, I think we budgeted for six months yes. on that storage so. because we need some time. They're not moving on July 1, yes. they're moving this fall, and then they might not move the equipment on the same day that they move into the building. So we did give a little cushion there. Yeah. And they're going right into elections with yeah. the municipal elections. But we won't have that expense next year. Yeah. And we've only done half a year this year. And, and I misspoke. One other thought I had is we, we've got a tax appraiser, two tax clerks. Do we need all three? I mean, can, can we survive if we? Uh, that's a Jeremy question, and I believe he's what? Or I can get him up here to answer uh, that. I don't feel comfortable cutting yeah. that without that, yeah. that conversation. Thank you. 
He is watching on Zoom. Okay. Presumably. He said he'd run up if we needed him. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is Call of Duty. <laughs> Additionally, bringing their folks back to the house as opposed to working at home, is that going to make a difference? Close. I'll let Jeremy address that. There are a few positions, appraisal positions, that would continue to work remotely. They're not necessarily doing office work, but doing field work. Uh, he can answer that for you, though. You want to pick up Yeah, you want to? We can come back to the you tax positions. At all. No, I want to hear from somebody else. Yeah, all right. We're definitely going to take the one penny away from the uh, repayment of the bond money with the school system. Did you mention that? That's the first item on the first time. I can't see it. <laughs> The good thing about this proposal is, which was important to me, is that uh, while Jim is looking at that, is that it, it, it keeps merit at three, which is what you requested. It is, or is it, it is a hit to um, COLA by a percentage, but it also keeps the compensation study of six hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars for January, which is intended, as I understand, to hit um, hard to fill positions in DSS, EMS, sheriff's office that are. Uh, it brings those two up to a market level in comparison to other yes. positions in other counties. Yes, there'll be an opportunity to review which departments to target first, but that is the concept idea, yes. The compensation study, give me the amount for that again. Uh, what's included in the manager's recommended is $667,000 with the January 1 implementation. Now, the catch is, if we do that, then we aren't mandated to change those salaries. But if we do follow the study, this could be a massive... Well, that is actually, the study has started this year. You funded, I think, 45000 in your current budget. And so what we've done to date is a sampling of positions to give us a number to budget, an estimate for next year. So the full study would need to continue. We've got it funded, but the 667000 is the implementation cost for one-third of the organization for six months. So I do want to be clear that next year's cost would be a full year of that implementation plus another, the, the second third of the organization with a January 1 implementation, and it would grow from there. She's saying exactly what I want to emphasize. We're looking at massive costs it's, it's, as time goes on. Sure. I don't know what the number for the sheriff was this year. I remember last year, I think it was, when we were budgeting last year, didn't you have $750,000 in the cost to train replacements for the sheriff's office? Do you know, have an idea of what that is this year? I can get it to you. But at this point, I don't know. We're spending a pile of money training replacements. We're spending a pile. Very expensive when we have high turnover which is what we're facing. I think we're at 19% turnover right now. It just makes sense to get us in a position where we're not having to constantly refill a revolving door. And I sent it, I sent Heidi a couple of ones. Did you share that with the other commissioners? Or did the study from, the, the information from Burlington? I did not. Um, did you want that shared? I got a. You sent it last night, and yeah. I sent it to Cheryl from HR just to give me some context on that. If I send that to somebody, can they pull that up? 
Yes, we send it. What? Okay. Yeah, if you send it to me, sir, I can pull it up. Okay. Email it to me. I think it'd be something good for us to look at. While we're talking about that, quick question for Tori. The, the governing the, sp the expenditures for the governing body and the recommended budget is right at three hundred twenty thousand dollars. Last year it was two ninety two ninety five. Do you the year before that it was two fifty? Do you know how much the board typically spends on its own expenses and whether they're slopped there? What page because are you I would bet, I'm sorry one oh five. I, I would bet that the board does not spend all of its allocation on travel and phones and no. um, technology, phones, training, travel, professional, professional association subscriptions. Now the professional subscriptions and the dues, yes. Um, but all the training budget you usually don't spend on. So can we find 100, 100 grand in that three hundred nineteen thousand dollar budget? <laughs> Will you speak to that? No, no. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, no, sir. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so actual expenditures so far this year um, for governing body is two hundred sixty one thousand one hundred seventy two dollars and ninety six cents. Um, where we have seen an additional increase in budget of 15000 is in our insurance and bonds. Mm -hmm. um, so liabilities continue to go up there to have coverage. So in my professional opinion, I don't believe that there's $100,000 there because then that would bring your recommended budget down to 219000 yeah. and that would currently exceed your expenses of 261000 uh, Are there any savings there? Um, we could look at individual line items. Um, if I'm looking at last year's budget, there was an original budget of 264000 and we spent 250000 So roughly $14,000 was available at the end of June 30th, 2022 of budget. You got 15 grand? Yeah. How much is that? Yeah. So, so really, your fifteen grand percent. is looking at the increase that we had in um, insurance. insurance. How much is the cell phone bill? Uh, bear with me, just a minute. Huh? Take your time. Average is around four hundred dollars a month. A month. A month. Is that for commissioners only? Yeah, yeah, just the five. Let me let me warn you, Miss Stevens. You need to warn us. Uh, if we start using our personal cell phones, which we can do, then you're open to a subpoena for your personal cell phone anytime you have litigation. But just for county stuff, right? Correct, but I don't think that's the area that the board's going to want to cut. Okay. Well, let me ask this. Well, actually, Mr. Mr. Atkins is in the house. Do you have an opinion about those uh, those three tax people? Yes, with the tax appraiser, that can be cut. That's been vacant forever. We don't have any <coughs> different plans for it. Uh, with the two tax clerks, those are temporarily vacant as we've uh, moved some people around and we're actively recruiting those positions. We do need those positions. Thank you. So if we froze the tax appraiser for an additional nine months, what would that give us? You want to freeze it for the entire year, right? Yeah, but I think it's already right. included in the 90-day freeze. Mm -hmm. Correct. So that would give an additional $42,020. I'll mention something else. Just, I would not advocate this. I don't think, but it would get, it would get to zero, and that is if instead of a four percent colon and a three percent merit, you went to a three percent colon and a four percent merit. Um, it gives you more flexibility to reward high performance, but it also reduces the raise for, for everybody else. So that would get you there. I don't, 
I, I offer it as a way to get to zero, but I'm not recommending it. In history's past, when they've done pay studies and not followed through, mm -hmm. would that be not like that, but kind of sort of? Uh, the adjustment on the colon mm -hmm. merit? I would say that the COLA and merit are no, just two very different yeah. philosophies for what we're trying to do with our organization. So the cost of living adjustment was to make our salaries more competitive and move the entire pay scale 5%. The merit is a way of rewarding employees on their anniversary. So if your anniversary is June 30th, you're not going to get anything until June 30th of the following year. Okay. That's why it's a little bit cheaper. The cost of living adjustment goes to every position on July 1. Okay. And they're just addressing different things. Your merit pay is a pay for performance. And this is all the agencies? This is everybody. This is your DSS, your sheriff. That everybody. have all these shortages. Yes. All of the positions would, would increase by 5%. The starting pay, even if it's vacant, goes up 5%. That we're having trouble filling. Looks just four forty uh, thirty five now. I know that uh, two commissioners have commitments at five o'clock, so we kind of need to be wrapping this up. So we need to schedule another work session. Because I think we're, we're not done. Because <laughs> Craig's, he's done and there's other, I mean, we're not done. Right? Okay. Do you want to look at your calendars for next week? Okay. Do you... I'm having a problem finding that attachment that I put you up. Okay. Well, we can get that for the next work session. What would the requirement be for notice? 48. I don't think they want to do it. Okay. Um, get next week? Um, um. The 12th is a Monday. Can we look at a Tuesday? Wait, Tuesday, I was going to say, looks good to me. Tuesday the 13th? 2 o'clock. Let's make it at 6 a.m. Sure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. The 13th at 2. <laughs> I'm up. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> 2 o'clock on the 13th. Everybody do the 13th. That works for me. Huh? Right. 1 o'clock? Did you say 1? Um, What's that look? Checking availabilities. <laughs> I'm good for one or two. Yep, I can do one or one. Okay, one, do one, maybe give us a little more time to work through this. Okay, one o'clock on the 13th in this room. Are there any, uh, is there any information you'd like us to prepare for you all? I got two requests. Okay. Go to my notes. All right. Okay. Um, we are we already went over the total number of employees. I just want you to make sure that number is good. You gave me 1040. That's the number I'm going off of. Total number of county employees. Can you verify for us? For next Tuesday. For next time. For yeah, just, you gave me 1040. That's not what I'm working on. I just want to make sure that I'm close. Okay. That's all. Uh, the second thing I'd like to ask is can is there any way that you can break down in ranges your employees? You can make it three ranges or you can make it four ranges. As long as you don't make it five, I'll be okay. A range of what? What uh, you can, However ranges you want to set it up. Like, uh, for example, if you have... Like uh, a pay? Yeah, like, like let's say that uh, you want to use a range from less than $50,000. How many people do you have making less than fifty thousand? Okay. okay. The next range may be fifty to seventy-five. 
how much, how many employees do you have in that range? And then the next range I would want is 75 plus. Okay. Or you you choose the ranges. It's not going to matter as long as you don't give me five ranges. I'll be fine. Uh, four ranges would be okay. You understand? What I'm trying to say. I understand okay. what you're asking right. for. Um, you gave me the total cost of those employees. And I got the stuff from ABSS. Oh, Jeremy. For an educational purpose, for, for, for people, I've had a lot of people in the community ask me how you come up with revenue neutral number. Now, you know, I can sure. shoot the math through them, but mm -hmm. you know how people's eyes glaze over when you do math. <laughs> Could I get you to explain that to the folks watching today? Right now, or? <laughs> yes, sir. Right Absolutely. I knew you so could. Step up to the microphone. Sure. Yes, oh, wow. I knew you could. This is the impromptu public speaking part. Yeah. So, um, in calculating the revenue neutral rate, the key is that you want to get to what you would have had this year without revaluation. So, you're not looking for what it was last year, you're looking for this year without a reval. So, basically, you're going to figure out what your total tax base was last year as a starting point. And then what the statute says is you take the average growth each year from the last revaluation and you apply that to last year's base. That gets you to the hypothetical base for this year. And then, of course, you've moved that real property number. So you're going to find the difference to find, okay, what tax rate applied to the new base with the revaluation gets me back to the same dollars I would have had with that last year's rate it, it brought forward by the average rate of growth year by year. You're just mathematically looking for something that's going to get you to the same bottom line. And that's your revenue neutral rate. Um, it's neutral in regard to all property. So personal property, uh, business property, um, the corporate assessment, everything across the board is what it's supposed to neutralize. Is that helpful? Is yeah, that I guess what I want you to maybe try to do, and I explained it perfectly, and I hope Brenda appreciates that from you. I know she's watching today. Uh, but I was actually curious about uh, the math involved. Yeah. You know, a lot of folks thought, you know, you may have to have a whiteboard to make this happen, yeah. but I have a lot of people who say, how do you come up with that number? Uh -huh. And I think, you know, may, may that, this may not be the right place to do it, but I thought, you know, well, if I talk to Jeremy today, I'll get to see if I can get him to do the math. Well, I'll tell you, there is the handout that we used at the first budget session, and it's kind of in a worksheet yep. format. Um, I can provide that and maybe just some notes to go with it to have a, a handout or a brochure or a flyer or something if somebody wanted to, to look through it. And I'd be glad to present it at any time. I, I do think it's easier. If you want the big concept, I can do that verbally on the spot. But if you want to understand really how to do the math, it's a lot easier with a visual. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. Sure. If, you, if you do make something up like that, you can email it to me. I'll, yeah. I'll just print it out. And I can do hand it. Hand them out. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank just you. Just send it all over. We'll do. Yep. Bruce, did you have that document available from Commissioner Carter? Cheryl sent it to you. Oh, find it. I don't know if we have time. It's not on my phone anymore, evidently. Forwarding it took the document out. Okay. That's it. That was it. What page are you looking for? Was there a particular page you wanted us to show? I think you go back toward the top. I'm to look right there, the yeah, entry yeah. level police officer right. one. I think that would be equivalent to our entry level sheriff deputy, mm -hmm. and we're paying what forty six thousand. Okay, forty six. Forty six thousand would be our equivalent entry deputy salary. Forty six seven, isn't it? Okay. Can I ask you a quick question just to clarify something? Because I appreciate you bringing these numbers up. Does Burlington, the city of Burlington, do they give their police officers health insurance? Yes, yes sir. Yes, you're required. Yes, sir. Does every employee in the city of Burlington get health insurance yes, as well? Sir. So, well. But not dependents. Well, they don't work for the Kent City. <laughs> I mean, it's a great benefit <laughs> that your employer pays for your health insurance. I can tell you, I've worked all over this country, and not one employer's offered to pay for my health insurance except this one. 
Nobody else has ever offered to do that for me. So it's a gift. We're required to cost the taxpayers twenty-two million dollars a year for that gift. So the Affordable Care Act is what a lot of money. Is. That. I did a lot of research on this insurance. I think I could be a, take the license for insurance salesman after it's much <laughs> been there, done that. <laughs> Yeah, that's I just that information I thought would be pertinent information for us to look at in light of our discussions for our sheriff's office play. And I mean, that's just one segment of what we're looking at. I mean, I think uh, if I remember correctly, last week, a week before last, Greensboro announced I can't remember if it was Greensboro or Guilford. One of them announced 52 as a starting, and the other one announced. Something in that same range as the starting. I don't know what orange and green price is. Right. Sheriff, how many deputies do you have? One how many total deputies do you have? Not, not detention center. Not. Uh, no. 164. 164. Yeah. And how many in the detention center? Uh, 127. 147. And that 164 is not including SROs. There's 17 SROs as well. 17 SROs. 328 total. And the 10,000 includes all sheriff and all county employees, is that correct? 1,040 is what he's talking about. That's a number that you shot up to us. Oh, yes, right. it does. It does. But all county employees, including the sheriff. Yes, we consider those. them county employees. <laughs> now, what we had discussed at one point was family coverage. And I don't know anybody that's able to do that. That was going to be just an astronomical number. We can. We can. You have uh, to raise how much taxes. You want to go up on you, your taxes? taxes will go up a nickel at the new rate. Sheriff, did you tell me that there's a, that it was it Guilford or Orange or Guilford or Greensboro that's providing family coverage? That's Burlington. Burlington. No. They they were supposedly uh, get. Uh, that should be in this. Yeah, this there's more than just this piece to this. I didn't get a chance to read it all last night before I forwarded it, but uh, so the five percent cola that's proposed would take our starting pay up to forty nine thousand. Well, I can probably help out a little bit. I've mentioned this once before. Uh, of taking the only difference I really have. Commissioner Turner is I, I had in, in my I was only three hundred thousand dollars off of your number um, was letting the five percent cola stay and the two percent merit stay just leave it the way it is and then take that three point eight million dollars that cola cost and divide it by the number of employees so therefore your low wage earner will get an extra benefit from that rather than someone on the upper end of the scale. For example, if you're making fifty thousand dollars a year and you get a five percent cola, you're going to get a twenty-five hundred dollar increase. Right. With my idea, with taking the thirty-three point six million dollars, three point six million dollars, and divided by the employees, each employee would get thirty-six hundred dollars. Sure. So that fifty thousand dollar worker will get an extra added benefit rather than someone who makes one fifty. Sure. So that's that would, actually that's like, that would actually get that's you a little closer, and I would just suggest you know, going forward, anytime you give bonuses like this, you could actually help out your lower end of your, your salary scale. You could, yes. Yes, sir, please. Yeah. Let me, let me say this along those lines, and I think that's great, but some of your employees may have the same rank. This employee may have been here 10 years longer than this one, or you may have had a disciplinary action where they didn't get the COLA, I mean, not the COLA, but the thing. And then if you go, and, you know, give them, I think that's sort of unfair. Not that... I wouldn't appreciate you giving the money, but the thing is, if, if I've been here 10 years, he comes in as a new deputy, and he's going to get the same raise, you know, percentage that I get, that sort of bothered me a little bit. Well, wouldn't that happen in your, in, in, in Mr. Turner's situation? Wouldn't that, wouldn't that, that actually, actually would occur? The cost right. of living adjustment. I mean, if you right. gave everybody a 5% coal across the board, sure. and you didn't take it's not about their performance, right? It's about making the pay scale more competitive, moving everybody 5% because the budget director and the assistant county attorney are just as difficult to fill sure. as the entry level 
social worker. So it's just trying to move yeah. us to a more competitive position. Yeah. I can understand both sides of this. Right? They're both needed. Yeah. We just haven't been able to do it all. Right. Yeah, that's what the state of North Carolina did under, uh, I think, several of the Democratic governors previously. They froze teacher pay. Uh, and I know my wife has frozen for, what, eight years? Yeah. Consecutively. Uh, so you were losing the experienced people. Those are the people you cannot afford to lose. Yeah, those rookies, you don't want to lose anybody, but you'd rather lose a rookie than you would right. a 10 or 20 year old. Yeah, right. It takes a long time to get to that top. It just didn't happen. And that's a lot of experience and years involved and commitment. And um, it seems like sometimes when people make a lot more than somebody else, we don't think they should. And um, I think if you work your job, you know, can't be all the same because yeah. all the job requirements and descriptions are not the same. Well, if you keep bumping the low end, eventually you have now the upper end making something comparable right. to the low end. It, it adds a compression issue. issue. Yeah. That's right. Well, job requirements are totally different. So. That's, that's, one of, that's one of the reasons I like a larger percentage of the raise going to um, merit. And a smaller amount going to those people that are actually performing get the get reimbursed for doing a good quality job. It's more of an incentive to do better work than. Guys and gals, we have seven minutes, <laughs> six minutes, whatever. Oh, um, one more so. comment, if I might. The sheriff, I was in the sheriff's office week before last before I headed out for vacation and uh, and I think it was la that week you lost four people that week yes sir it's taken was it three deputies and one detention officer it was uh, yeah. Yeah, three deputies one detention officer I mean it's we just can't keep going there I mean it went and it's not just the sheriff's office it's not just the sheriff's there office. was a it's really big a bad position I'm telling you I'm gonna have to do something with is the courthouse security or contracts? There was a really big class, a BLET class at the memorial service. Big class of all those future officers. One of them about fainted, bless his heart. How many did you get versus Burlington? We had got uh, two. Burlington got 16. Okay. So. They have 15 in the next one that we pulled. And the officer that came to my church to help the homeless lady he moved from Guilford to here because to Burlington because of that. And he didn't lose any of his rank or time or anything. It's a real issue. You Should even heard it in volunteer fire departments today. It's it's okay. it's everything. Everything is costing more. EMS, ESS, <laughs> everybody. And everybody's having difficulty getting quality employees. Should we adjourn to the 13th? Yes. Everybody ready? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.